أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلوات وأتم التسليم على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your fasting and your deeds and we all know that we're all very upset that there's only going to be a few more days and the holy month of Ramadan will come to an end. The ending of the holy month of Ramadan also marks a variety of different occasions where we have a series of different feelings that we go through whether it be anticipating our Eid day and buying new clothes and getting ready for the nice gifts that we are going to receive, or in my case, we're going to be giving to the younger children because we don't get anything when we're adults. It's also us feeling that we are going to be separating ourselves from this very spiritual, beneficial month the last Friday of the holy month of Ramadan is also a very spiritual day as well, which uh, ended today. And there are a variety of things that should have been done on this particular day. And in significance of this month, we know that we commemorate a very important event. In three more days, on the 3rd of June, will be the anniversary for the passing away of the person who initiated this very project, the late Imam Khomeini, rahmatullahi alayhi. And it's very interesting for us to have a look at what were the innovative ideas brought about by the late Khomeini that gave inspiration to everyone around the world irrespective of their faith, irrespective of their sect, irrespective of their nationality or race. And there are a few things that Imam Khomeini did introduce in the very early days of him uh, taking over the Shah regime and starting the Islamic Revolution of Iran. The first of these things was to make sure that the imperial powers, the superpower like the United States and others ceased to put their nose into the involvement of the Iranian country and the Iranian people. And the Iranian government made sure that they not only took over the American embassy, but they severed all ties with the American embassy at that time. Equal to that kind of activity, Imam Khomeini made sure from the very early days of him coming to power, for people to realize the oppression and the tyranny that the people of Palestine were going through. Especially at that time, with so much of their land being occupied, along with the land of southern Lebanon. We know that Imam Khomeini was never a sectarian, never did he mention anything for the cause of tashayyu' or the Shia madhab, or anything of that sort. You all know that southern Lebanon was also occupied, but never have we heard, not even to the slightest level of parallel equality between what Imam Khomeini has said with regards to Palestine and what he has said in regards to southern Lebanon. There is no South Lebanon day because the problem of Palestine 
and the issue of the occupation of Palestinian land and the Zionist regime is something far worse than any other kind of tragedy in humanity. And therefore he introduced this particular day, the third day, uh, the last Friday of the holy month of Ramadan, calling it International Quds Day. Another thing that he introduced was Yawm al Bara'a, the day of disassociating ourselves. And this particular day is on the 9th of the Hijjah, in which all of the Hujjaj are in the plains of Arafah. Everyone is in one particular area. All the pilgrims are there on that very same day in one particular location. And Imam Khomeini said, seeing that all of you are Muslims, and seeing that all of you are together with one piece of clothing, with one attire, with one uniform, with one purpose in being there in Arafah, it would be of fundamental importance for us to also unite in our stance against global oppression. And that's where Yawmul Bara'a was introduced. And Yawmul Bara'a, which or the day of disassociation, is basically us as Muslims coming together, irrespective of our background or nationality or sect or anything else. But as Muslims, while we are performing that obligatory Hajj pilgrimage, we are able to make a stance against what is happening around the world, whether it be the evil being perpetrated by global superpowers or anything of that sort, or just being a voice for the oppressed and for the Muslims. Unfortunately, as you know, the Saudi re regime did not welcome this in any way. And from then onwards, many massacres occurred in Medina, in Mecca, in Arafah, by the Salafi regime in killing innocent people who were innocently demonstrating against imperial superpowers of that time. Alhamdulillah, until today, this particular event is commemorated on the 9th of the Hijjah. So that was the third thing that Imam Khomeini introduced. Fourth, sorry. The first was the United States, putting a stop to the United States. Second was Palestine, which is what we are commemorating today. The third is Yawm al Bara'a. And the fourth is also something very, very important and something very relevant to everyone here. And that is in, nine, in the early stages of the revolution, in 1979, six years before any sanctions were imposed on the apartheid regime, Imam Khomeini rahimahullah put a stop and severed all ties with South Africa and made sure that that relationship or those agreements that the apartheid regime had with the Shah of that time would no longer exist, even though it would work to the disadvantage of Iran as far, as far as the crude and the oil and all those things are concerned. All of these examples that we are giving, my dear brothers and sisters, are signs that we have revolutionary people in our world today that, have, that come for a reason, that are brought into this world for a purpose. Not only for the sake of awakening our hearts, not only for the sake of being a voice for the underprivileged and for the oppressed, but also for the sake of us realizing that there are so many things that we share in our commonalities and that, that these are the things that we need to stick to and stay away from any other things that would lead to any type of tension or disunity 
or discords. As human beings, we believe that we are stronger in number when it comes to us uniting with each other. We also believe that these very basic, simple requirements of human beings should be met. And these requirements are things as simple as matters of safety and security and one being able to live in the very land that them and their forefathers were entitled to have. And therefore, we need to make sure that we never allow anything to bring us, to take, to drag us apart. We should never allow any kind of rumors or any kind of misinformation or any kind of negative media portraying this person as the evil one or that person as the bad one. But rather put aside all of these things and focus that if we have the likes of Imam Khomeini, if we had the likes of such revolutionary people like Nelson Mandela and other people like that, who did not share anything as far as their, the religion is concerned or the theological basis is concerned, but they shared many, many other things. And those other things, in many cases, are more important than those things that we could be differing in. And therefore, we need to seize any opportunity that we have in trying to make sure that we have that alliance with each other, that we participate, that we educate ourselves, educate those who are around us, and revive these ver very memories and making sure that we are working for a cause, that we are motivated towards that cause of freeing humanity from any kind of tyranny and oppression wherever they may be. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَالصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدِ وَآلِهِ الطَّاهِرِينَ